<laughs> We finally did it. Τι κάνει, Αντούζ. Καλά είμαι, εσύ. Καλά. Εδώ. Έλια. Στο στούντιο. <laughs> ναι, επιτέλου. <laughs> θα, θα, θα μιλήσω. No. Θα μιλήσω ελληνικά. Yes. That's it. You, you saved this for now. I didn't know you could do it. Yeah, λίγο. Uh, not λίγο. Yeah. This is not λίγο. Μαθαίνω ακόμα. This is My friends line. laugh at me because I'm always saying, Μαθαίνω ακόμα all these years. <laughs> <laughs> Still doing. Σιγά σιγά. This is borderline πολύ. What you just did. Yeah, all right. Yeah. I mean, you've been here for how long? Uh, Eftah Kronia. Eftah Kronia. Seven years. You're a local now. I like to call myself that, yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. lucky to have you. Man, I'm lucky to be here, really. Because yeah. I love it. You got a new song out. Defibrillator. Great song. I'm uh, very excited about it because it's a different direction mm-hmm. for me. So, and it's, it's something uh, maybe a little more radio friendly. Yeah. That I'm used to. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of a, it's something, it's a very conscious decision. Mm-hmm. You know what? Many people think that, many musicians think that this is a bad thing sometimes. Yeah. But it's not, in my opinion at least. Well, you know, the, the word commercial mm-hmm. is so, it's such a bad word to the musician community. Mm-hmm. But um, I always, I'm always going to keep elements of musicianship mm-hmm. in my stuff. And it's always going to be, you know, like, Defibrillator has live elements mm-hmm. and sample mm-hmm. elements, you know, sample, uh, you know, beat stuff. So, yeah, I mean, if the song is good, it's good. Yeah. That's the end of the day. It's good. I you agree. know, and that's that's all I'm trying to do. It's a great song. It's a simple song. Yeah. Like simple and what I mean by that is that it might not be like uh, structurally uh, complicated. Right. But... It's so on purpose. The melody is uh, what we were talking about outside before. It's like it transcends language barriers. No words. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. And it works. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's like a hey, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just something, something simple, but it's just got to feel good. Mm-hmm. And that's, it, it felt good to me. I wrote it on an acoustic guitar, mm-hmm. two chords, and it just sort of, that's, that's what came out, was uh, this little ooh, ooh, ooh thing over the two chords that, Really. So when you wrote it, Mm -hmm. was it a conscious decision that I'm going to write a song that is a bit more commercial, like you said, or like a radio-friendly version? It's not something like uh, that you had uh, uh, maybe been working on. Maybe the melody was there uh, before you actually sat on the couch. Yeah. So I I started writing with I wanted to be simple. Mm -hmm. So two chords. Let me see what I got. Came up with some some lyrics. Uh, The ooh ooh part, the chorus came from something else I was writing All right. that was, I loved, it was an instrumental part that I just loved this mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and um, I kind of wanted it to be a string mm-hmm. and then it worked over these two chords so I combined that and it, I just felt like, ah, oh, this, is, this is where it needs to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice, nice. Great song. I mean, uh, pff, congratulations on that, dude. Seriously. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to do, we're going to do a hybridio today. Θα μιλάμε Greeklish. Λίγο Greeklish, ναι. Okay. ναι. So feel free to speak Greek when That's what I wanted like to it. say. Θα προσπαθήσω να μιλήσω ελληνικά. Okay. That's more correct than what I said earlier. Yeah, you're getting there though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe in another seven years you're going to be like fluent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's hope. Yeah, it's not the easiest thing in the world though. No, but you know, my issue is uh, there's so many... Everyone speaks such great English, mm-hmm. you know? And even in the music community especially. So um, it's... Obviously, if no one spoke English, yeah. I would be much further along. Yeah, you'd but have I'm speaking to. English, with, English with everyone. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, so, but I, I really, I, I took uh, Mathema, Mathema mm-hmm. Lego uh, for a little while, and I know how to read and write in Greek. Mm-hmm. So this is 
a step up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, I got so many things that I want to ask you. First of all, thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Of course. Thanks for having me, man. You're the first singer. Yeah, baby. All right. To sit here. All right. We've been lucky Ooh. enough to have... Yeah. Uh, paving the way for, yeah, you're for paving more the way. singers. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be afraid, singers. Yeah, we're gonna do it. We're gonna we're yeah, gonna have great. more people on here that sing. Uh, we've we've had uh, we've been lucky enough to have great musicians such as yourself uh, sitting on this chair. And the thing is that uh, we because when we started we did we did more like guitar stuff, but now yeah. it's like more music. Cool. This yeah, is what yeah. we enjoy. It's like conversations with no musts. Yeah, you know, that's just great. Say whatever you like and have an insight in what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is great. Thank you, thanks again for being yeah, here. Yeah, thanks for having me here. But yeah. most people speak, uh, f are fluent in English, so it's not, 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 it's not going to be I'll issue. speak siga siga. All right, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. Uh, so, I've known you mm -hmm. uh, from seeing you play and perform with some of my very good friends yes. and amazing musicians. Such as uh, Mario Seanu, yeah. such as uh, Mike Evdemon, such as Costa Sabanis, yeah. who is like my man. He's awesome. Yeah, everybody is. I mean, we love you, Costas. Yeah, Costas, we love you. And we miss you. Yes. And come back here as soon as you can. <laughs> and also, of course, with Chris Zantiotis. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Who's Chris? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> it's very interesting what you're doing because. Um, First of all, you live here. Yeah. This was a decision that you make that you made moving from LA to Athens. Los Angeles to Athens, baby. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, we've grown up here in Greece and Athens, which is like a big city, but most people say that you have to go to LA to make it. Sure. And you did the opposite. Sure. How come? Um, yeah, you know, I was I lived in LA longer than I've lived anywhere else in my life. And uh, what a ride, what an incredible, uh, it was 11 years, mm -hmm. almost 12 years. Um, it's a playground for so many things, and it's a learning ground. And I learned so much about my craft, and, and I feel like uh, it's really shaped me into the artist I am. And then I reached a place where uh, I was one of the most popular, let's say, underground artists, in terms of playing the scene, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of how many people I could get to a show, you know, we were bringing probably the most out of most bands that were not signed. Mm -hmm. um, and playing big stages like House of Blues and whatnot. But it came a time where I realized there was a ceiling because what I was doing is it, it's soul funk music. And the only people getting signed are, it's pop. Basically, I mean, if you're gonna, if you're really gonna make it in LA or, or just in the U.S. in general, I mean, it's, it's pop music. Mm -hmm. So for what I was doing, I realized, man, this is um, there's no way uh, someone's gonna sign me for doing what I do. Um, I was on the table with Capitol Records at one point, and they signed someone else instead of me, uh, who was more of like a, like an R&B kind mm -hmm. of kind of guy, um, good singer and everything, but it was more commercial. And you know, I realized th I don't think this is gonna happen. Uh, so I started working with producers overseas, all around. Mm -hmm. And as that progressed, I realized how much uh, more appreciative they were of what I had to offer as mm -hmm. a singer, mm -hmm. as an artist, as a writer. So finally, um, as a lot of people know, I'm in Parav Stellar and I started working with him. I didn't meet him for five years. Uh, we were working back and forth, file sharing, you mm -hmm. know, and then... Uh, as that relationship progressed and I started working with other people and it was going higher and higher, I just, you know, I knew Europe was where I needed to be mm -hmm. because LA was always going to be cool to say you're from, cool to, you know, LA's cool, but it's, do I want more? Yes. So I ended up here in mm -hmm. my favorite country in the world. Yeah. Do you feel that you'd have to compromise in order for you to get signed there? You'd have I, would, I would have had to, for sure. Yeah. I, in fact, the, one of the first conversations I had with the, the representative at Capitol was uh, she wanted me to do a song with like, uh, like pop artists. She was like, you know, maybe the best way is have you be a feature with so-and-so and so-and-so. And, -so. and, you know, it's like, well, do I want to be signed and be not me? Mm -hmm. Or do I want to continue on my path? And um, 
you know, I don't know if I had gotten signed. Obviously, if I had gotten signed, I would have... Who knows what would have happened. But in L.A., something that's notorious is they shelve artists. Mm -hmm. In fact, that guy got shelved. The oh. guy who got signed. And he never came out mm -hmm. that I know of. Yeah. Um, so, you know what I mean? It's... Uh, it was a blessing mm -hmm. not to be signed because then they have you like this. If I want to play a show, hey, my buddy wants me to play at Viper Room. Well, they have to sign off on that. They have to, you know, it's, and it, it's, uh, it's a good thing, I think, uh, mm -hmm. for me that it didn't happen. Yeah. It's very important that you're mentioning this because some people think that getting signed is that they've made it. I used to think that, yeah. you know, when I was much younger, that's all I wanted. I just wanted to be signed, you know, to a record label. Oh, but it's changed so much, you know, mm -hmm. these records, especially the majors. I mean, who, yeah. who cares to be signed by them? I mean, you have to, you do have to compromise. I think everyone does at yeah. this point. Do you think that uh, one of the, of the factors that played an important role in you deciding to leave and <coughs> believing now, uh, looking back, uh, back at your career so far, that not getting signed was a blessing? Was it also because you're not only a performer and singer, but you're also a writer and a producer? And exactly. Uh, this is something that you, you didn't want to be caged in. A yeah, I couldn't. I can't imagine being caged like that and feeling mm -hmm. like that. Um, I, it would have driven me crazy because mm -hmm. I was such a, when it came to LA, like, talk about man on the scene. I mean, I was part of my issue of like unhealthy lifestyle. <laughs> In LA was that I was out every night. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think I was in a seven-day week. I think I might have been home one night. Right. You know, I was. I just had so much going on, and I knew everyone in the scene, and so yeah, to be caged would have been kryptonite for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I. Uh, I look back at that. And I'm extremely happy it didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm glad it worked out for you, my friend, yeah. and I'm glad that we get to have you here. Yeah, and, man. Uh, with Parov. Uh, you didn't meet for the first five years of you working together, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it, it's very interesting how uh, the musical tastes of you and him merged yeah. so well from completely different uh, places and uh, co completely different approaches to music because you were yes. like a genuine American soulful, uh, like funk, yeah. soul singer and performer. And this is something that uh, made Parov Stellar now so different live having right. you in the in the in the lineup like permanently and as a member. Yeah, I mean that's a testament to who he is as an artist because he's so uh, open, you know. To obviously, I mean, what he really does is it, he, he combines electronic music with so many different genres. Obviously, we know electro swing is what made the big splash, but I mean, he continues now with blues, soul, um, even pop elements, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's who he is as an artist. And he, you know, I think why it works so well is that he and I respect each other so much as artists, as each, you know, as separate artists, mm -hmm. that we can come together and be one thing, mm -hmm. you know, because I understand his vision, he understands who I am as an artist, and, it's, and it works that way because, because of that, because he's an open, an open book when it comes to that. And you started as a guest, right? Yeah, started as a guest. Uh, here in Athens, mm -hmm. release festival 2018. I left my wedding notoriously, uh, my wedding party in Kefalonia. Okay. Uh, and I came. Are you from Kefalonia? Ah, you from Kefalonia? Yes. Uh, hey, one of the best islands, maybe the best island in Greece. I love you. Really, man. really. <laughs> it, I mean, come on, I chose to have the wedding party there. It was incredible. <laughs> yeah. I've been there four times. Um, but yeah, I left, uh, he, he gave me the invite, mm -hmm. you know, he said, oh, come on, we're coming to Athens, you got to play. I said, oh man, I'm, 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 all my family and friends are coming from the U.S., I'm going to be in an island. And I said no at first. Mm. I said, I can't do it. Mm. Uh, can, hopefully we can do it another time. And, you know, he was cool. And then my, uh, my father called me and he was like, what are you doing? You have to do it. He's, and he said the best thing, it was the best advice. He said, you're... Uh, these are the people who love you. This is your family, this is your friends. They will understand. You know, it's not the wedding, it's the wedding party. Mm -hmm. It's not like it's your wedding. So leave, do what you do, and come back, and everyone's going to be happy that you do it. Mm -hmm. Great advice, because I w don't know if I would have ended up in the band, you know, yeah. had I not taken that advice and gone yeah. and done the show. Was this the first time that you performed with Parov? Uh, uh, with the band in Parov Stellar, yes. Yeah. I was a support act in 2016 uh, up and down mm -hmm. the West Coast, yeah, yeah, West yeah. Coast tour. Yeah, so. I think that this is the time when I saw you here at the Release Festival. Yeah. By yeah. the sea. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 2018. This is the time when I saw you. And uh, uh, I came on and I did one song mm -hmm. and, and like a half a song. So mm -hmm. just as a guest. Mm -hmm. And that's how, it, that's how it started. Yeah. Awesome. And when did you decide, when did you, did you both decide that you were going to do this? Like, uh, this was, this was going to be your main gig? Um, when did he decide to put me in the band? Mm -hmm. Like, in the band? Uh, I will never forget that, too, because it was Seagate Festival. I think it's like 80,000 people. We were going on co headliner with. Lana Del Rey, mm -hmm. who I'm a massive fan of. Okay. I'm like a fanboy of her. I love her, uh, her work, everything. So um, he just, uh, we had a meeting and he just kind of, you know, asked me how I was liking touring and is it something for me? I'm like, or is it something for me? Of course, <laughs> that's what I want to do. And uh, he said, yeah, we'd love to have you in, mm -hmm. you know, make, make it permanent. Mm -hmm. And uh, right there, it was, it was amazing in, in Budapest. Mm. Never forget that. It's fantastic. I mean, you brought the element of the front man, uh, me being able to handle the crowd mm. and to, to like transfer the vibe even more. Uh, yeah. The way you do it, not only with your singing, but with the way you like perform, the, the performing holistically. Yeah, I'm, it, it brought another element in Paro Stellar that yeah, actually. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's great. Uh, really happy for you, man. And also, I mean, I've known that you're in Parov Stellar, but I have come to uh, look into your personal career. Yeah. And this is what actually got me more into you, yeah. the personal stuff. Yeah, cool. Because this is more close to what I'm, I'm yeah, into. Yeah. And uh, I remember seeing you perform uh, in La a Liar Man, I think, in Gazi, yeah, yeah. with Zadiotis of them on Tasos Korkovelos. That's the band, yeah. And Mario Ciano and the... Um, and the guys from Parov. Yeah, the horn section. The horn section was amazing. Yeah. Great place too. It was summertime. Yeah, it was such a memorable gig for all of us because mm -hmm. we did not have a rehearsal for that gig. Yeah. I sent them the set list, everyone in the band, obviously even the horns, uh, and just said, man, everyone learn the record. Just learn what's on the record. And showed up, everyone did the homework. Mm -hmm. And I think that because everyone is, they're such great musicians, um, everyone was sort of elevating each other, you know, like everyone wanted to be on their game that night. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. It, you could just feel it. And, and, you know, me as a singer and the writer of the material and the whole thing, like I have to, you know, I'm up there singing, but of course, I, I'm, uh, is he going to hit this next thing? Is this thing going to happen? Man, two, three songs in, I knew I didn't have to worry about anything. I just concentrated on me because mm -hmm. these guys just came in and killed it. And it's, it's a gig that, all those musicians still talk about the horn guys, you know, is that the old, all these guys, they yeah. all still like, man, that liar man gig was special. Yeah. Being there was great. And I also could tell that you have, you were having a great time and yeah, you didn't man, have to worry so about it. You were really zoned in. Yeah. And, uh, apart from the fact that these guys are amazing musicians, like uh -huh. you said, every one of them, uh, the, th the not having rehearsed element of it yeah. actually made it more special. Yes. And it's something that, not only can create like uh, anxiety or some sort, but it also makes it more exciting. Yeah. And it, of course, when you pass the point that you were sure that these guys know what they're doing, mm -hmm. then it must have made it. I mean, I think that this is a situation in which you shine because yeah. you are a very organic performer. Exactly. And your music is also, it's, it's great when you listen to it like on the recording, but live is just... Yeah, as it should be, in yeah, my opinion. It should always should. be... I'm a big fan of like taking, you know, the live element has to, it has to be a little bit different than the record, right? I mm -hmm. mean, it, it, you, someone came to see you live now, they paid some money. It should be a different experience mm -hmm. than what they've heard at home a million times, you know? <laughs> Let's hope a million times they've been listening to the record. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting um, that you're saying that though. Yeah. I'm sorry if I'm interrupting no, you, no. but uh, some very like purists, uh -huh. especially in specific genres mostly but they want to listen like to exactly the version of the song no. that they've come to love and well i get it from a standpoint of okay so one of my favorite bands is uh, counting crows you know them yep i love counting crows um incredible songwriter adam durith the lead man he's the opposite of me mm -hmm. he they do their songs so different life and i do get not uh, i do get kind of being like oh man that's that's not what i know mm -hmm. But they're notorious for that. Like he changes the melody of the, <laughs> of the chorus, of of the verses. He he just does what he wants. Mm -hmm. And once you understand that, like that's what he's doing, 
and then you buy into it. Mm-hmm. So I get both sides because I, I, I really do. Because when I first saw them the first time, I was like, oh man, he's changing everything. But now I get what he, you know, it's maybe more fun for him to live it organically the way he wants to, you mm-hmm. know. Um, and so I respect both ways. Mm-hmm. I really do. I saw Adele before she was massive mm-hmm. in the Roxy and on in Hollywood, very small venue. I saw Incubus there too. Nice, actually. One of my favorite bands. Yeah, yeah, as we were talking about. Um, but I saw Adele, like, uh, she sang her first record just like the record. Mm-hmm. And when I say just like, I mean, it was like note for note. And I get that too. You know, I just, I understand both sides of it. I think I'm in the middle. I'm very much like, yeah, okay, I'm going to sing the hooks like you know them. But um, verse wise or here and there, we're going to change a few things and make it a little bit more yeah. of a live. Uh, Arrangement. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's uh, it's very interesting when an artist gets to do that when they change their song just enough so that it's a different experience, but not that much that it's something completely different. Sure. For the untrained ear, which yeah, is something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, not everybody's a musician. Exactly. And some people who are not uh, like trained musicians expect to listen to something that might like what is he playing now. Exactly. But the thing is that it's always interesting to do that and finding actually the right way and the to be like in the middle. You said, like you said, mm-hmm. it's it's something that also takes talent to do. I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, I think I'm. I don't know. I, I just. Uh, I feel like I represent so many sides of it all because I'm such a big fan of things, mm-hmm. uh, obviously of music, and at the same time, I love musicians you know and what musicians bring to the table when i say musicians i mean the players you know and uh you got to make it fun for them too Mm. you know so it's it's a real fine line that i've I've learned to walk because i've always had a band Mm -hmm. from from younger when i started and uh you know if it's just two note stuff like the fibrillator Mm -hmm. that's not fun you know for for musicians yeah so you gotta you gotta shake it up here and there even on the stuff like that you know add a little live little run or something Mm-hmm. Um, and I've learned that over all the years of all the musicians I've, I've been around. One, two, three. <laughs> Juliet, she left her man back home in Carolina. Teddy West, a pretty face, she wanna be a star. I just think it's Hotel California But it ain't no She got a job Now she sit directly across the hall Come on You got to find her Juliet, she ain't no good I can't, can't, can't get nothing done Verse two, something like this. Hey Juliet, since you come around, I found I really don't like the weekend. No, oh, I get upset if I can't see your face from nine to five. Woo! No disrespect, you should be an actress or a model, like you want to. Instead of all this, you're better than sitting there taking somebody's call. Here we go now. They got to fire Juliet. She ain't no good. No, I can't, can't, can't get nothing done. Oh, no, baby. Yeah. So many things I want to ask you, dude. Seriously. Yeah, tell me, just, tell me. Uh, I'm just making up uh, my mind regarding yeah. what I'm gonna, what you, I'm gonna you're ask. Good, you man. You don't have a card, man. You don't have a. Nah. It's all coming from the mind. We I, don't do that. Respect. Here, we just have conversations. We don't have any. This is how we roll. <laughs> it's a, it's a skill to do what you do, honestly. Nah, I nah, mean, we've been doing this for a while, but uh, you know, it's it's a blessing for us to be able to talk to people like yourself and other musicians that we have on and. Anyway, so defibrillator. Yeah, 
Απεινιδωτή, I think is the Greek word. Is that? Yeah. Πε μου πάλι. Απεινιδωτή. Απεινιδωτή. Yeah, it's the machine that they use to bring you back to life. Correct. Yeah. So, do you want to give us a, like a backstory on the. Yeah. Oh, now let's get deep. Uh, yeah. Um, let's do it. <laughs> We have no so, better place to be. Yeah. So, I wrote this song. Let me see. How deep do I want to go? <laughs> uh, so, sitting on my couch, October, I wrote this song. So, it's actually quite recent. Usually, I don't put a song out that fast. Mm-hmm. But it was October. Um, and uh, I had some friends going through some stuff. And uh, some depression. And I was like, you know, I'm gonna write this pop song. Let me try this two chord thing. But I want it to be about something, you know? Like the old days, Michael Jackson songs are about something. And Lionel Richie songs, a lot of them are about something, you know? Like pop now, obviously, I don't wanna be that guy. Oh, pop's not about anything. But, you know, yeah. it's, uh, it's lost some of the, you know, um, They Don't Care About Us is one of my favorite Michael Jackson songs. That's a hit on the radio and it's such a deep song. Mm. So I wanted to do that. Like, let me write something kind of pop, but about something. And I thought of my friends with the depression and I said, all right, I'm gonna, maybe it's something about coming out of depression. So that's where it went. By the time I was finished writing this song, I didn't realize how uh, strong the subconscious is. By the time I was done, a lot of it was about my own darkness that I was sort of headed toward that I didn't realize. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm coming out of kind of a dark uh, time for a lot of reasons we don't have to get into. Okay. But um, it ended up being about me too, which, I, which is why it's such a special song for me, because it's, it's about my friends, it's about me, and it's now for anyone who might be going through a dark time. And, and it's, it's really, that's why Defibrillator, you know, bring me back to life. And Let's, let's have a good time is one of the lines in the song. Like, let's get out of this place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, when I listened to the song for the first time, uh, my personal experience and what, it, what emotions it brought out in me, yeah. it was that uh, it was a mix of nostalgia for some reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, it was, uh, it felt like, Like you said, it really hit the spot and it's, it, it made me feel that things are going to get better. This song mm. wants me to... It's a hopeful me. thing. Yeah, yeah it's, it's dark, thing. but hopeful. That's yeah. exactly what I wanted. It's, like, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. bit ominous, mm-hmm. but hopeful. And yeah. I really, everything I write, if there's a darkness in it, I always, um, like something since I started writing songs, I always want to end or have the overall message being positive, you know? Because of course, it's, we're going to write about dark things. That's what, you know, and pain and break up and whatever uh, that's art jumps out of you when it comes to that stuff mm-hmm. but um, I always want the positivity in there you know yeah so so that there's some hope at the end mm-hmm. I really uh, I'm telling anyone who hasn't listened to the song please do it I mean say it in Greek again uh, apinidotis apinidotis yeah wow I should have gotten that And this is why you say clear in the song. And this is why we say clear, yeah. Say, it's, it's you know, because they say that before, mm-hmm. right? You know, yeah, they say, yeah. hey, you always see it on the TV shows, clear, Bob, and yeah. then they, they're trying to bring you back to life. And I really like the stripped down version that we did here. Yes, man, that was, really, was super cool. Really intimate, and thank you for that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, like you said, you actually ended up writing about your experiences yeah and this is something very important for a musician and especially a writer producer because if you want to write things everything starts from experiences so yeah you know, yeah and this is something that we've talked about with musicians that have been always like in a dark room practicing right and playing yeah. playing playing yeah not ever uh seeing the light of the sun and experiencing <laughs> right. things yeah this is honing the craft yeah yeah this is something very important i mean you can see the songwriting of artists change once they start having experiences yeah. in life. And this is why it changes once you get older. Mm, yeah, absolutely, man. That's great. So this is a single, right? Yeah, it's a single. And is, a, is there going to be a new album too? So what I'm doing is uh, an EP mm-hmm. series. Oh, yeah. Okay. I know, it's a bit complicated. But uh, what I'm going to do is... Um, so Defibrillator will be on volume one of my new EP, which... I will reveal now the name is uh, Holograms of My Reflection. Awesome. Yeah, and it's going to be Holograms of My Reflection, Volume 1, 2, and 3. Okay. Uh, volume 1 is 
defibrillator. My single before that was called uh, Getting You Off, very sexy, steamy single. And this is all kind of like the more radio friendly mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, I think I'm going to do four songs, volume one. Volume two, I'm a little upset with Beyonce because <laughs> Beyonce comes out with this awesome country album. And my volume two okay. is, is also, it's kind of like soul folk and a little bit of country. Mm -hmm. um, she's got more followers than me by a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. Um, so she's allowed. No, but her record's are really amazing. But uh, yeah, my, my volume two will be more of the acoustic based, um, uh, starting from acoustic, but I mean, obviously I have the band on a lot of the stuff, but it's very borderlines on country. Okay. Um, yeah, and it's super lyric driven. Mm -hmm. And then volume three, I'm considering making it more like a blues uh, version or collection. And that's because I just want everyone to see all sides of me. So let's do it in volume one, volume two, volume three. Different, but still, you know, the through line is me. Mm -hmm. And uh, something different, you know? Awesome. Yeah. Well, when should we be expecting the, all this? The first volume, I'm hoping June. Okay. Yeah, we're close. Mm -hmm. Volume two, I'd love to get it out this year. Mm -hmm. Winter, because it has a, a winter feel. Volume three, who knows? Okay. <laughs> who knows? When it's ready. Awesome, dude. I can't wait for all this. And yeah. Do you, do you, are you planning on uh, like touring with that too? I really hope so. It's something I'm working, man, you can't even believe. Oh, I'm really working hard on getting this band uh, to, to big stages, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it is my um, my mission right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're a busy man, though. I mean, yeah, yeah you have a lot. Uh, you have your work cut out for you with all the stuff that you're doing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, all the things you mentioned about the different directions that the EPs are going to go to. Yeah, it's very interesting because knowing you as an artist and having listened to your work uh, more uh, recently. Mm -hmm. um, you like to experiment, like not experiment, I wouldn't say experiment, but you like to touch many different styles yeah. while having a core. And uh, what you do is really, it's you. I mean, it's really personal and yeah. uh, it's really difficult for, difficult for someone to listen to you singing and not understand that it's undoes. Right. But having said that, uh -huh. you can use this in so many different uh, environments, musical environments, and uh, do it in a way that it works for everything. Mm -hmm. So, without like changing who you are, though, without trying too hard to exactly. fit the circumstance. Exactly. And this is something. How how do you think that you you actually achieved this? Did you did you consciously try to make this happen, or did you? I mean, you've probably failed sometimes too. Yeah, it's a good question because it's it's um, it is a conscious deci decision like to do the volume one, two, three, and make it a collection of this genre, let's say. But it is all me, mm -hmm. you know, like um, some of these songs, I, I'm writing them at different times. I'm not sitting down and saying, I'm gonna write volume two now mm -hmm. to be the country, you know, soul folk thing. No, I wrote uh, two of those songs, I think three, four years ago because it was what came out of me. Mm -hmm. Now, because I've written so much stuff and there's so many things laying all around, it's like, okay, this goes with that. This goes with that. Now it kind of makes sense because it's all pieces of me. Right. And that's why holograms of my reflection. Like mm -hmm. it's just, um, you know, I, uh, so I have no problem saying this. I got this horrible review in Greek, uh, what is it? Rolling Stone, oh, Greek yeah. Rolling Stone. Yeah. They did a review on my album and it was uh, like this terrible review. <laughs> and I realized really quickly, like this person doesn't, has not researched me as an artist. He doesn't get it. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens. You know, man, there's no artist in this world who hasn't had a bad review. Mm -hmm. No one. So um, this is kind of why, not why, but it, it, it made me want to like, yeah, man, I'm going to continue to show who I am, which mm -hmm. is many different things. Mm -hmm. Because like, like you're saying, it's, it's still Andus. You mm -hmm. know, it's, my voice is distinct enough, I hope, yeah. that anything I do is going to be, okay, it's hand dues, you know. And that's what I want people to, to understand, you mm -hmm. know, and that makes it a, a, an easier transition to the stage to do anything I want to do. Yeah, and actually I respect this a lot more because some people tend to think that they're going to find a recipe that works and they're sure. going to stick to it 
and they're going to base their success on this but the, it takes guts yeah for you to while uh, of course being trying to make this even bigger than it is and trying yeah. to trying to grow uh, grow as an artist and to become more uh, famous not like not for the fame but yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, the, to, the recognition and yeah, the yeah 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 which is know, which is important and the likes and the comments no <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is that the fact that you're doing this while uh, you're you're not afraid of not sticking to a recipe which is something that I respect musically very much yeah yeah no I mean I don't think I could even if I wanted to you know it's yeah, not it's just not me it wouldn't be you yeah, yeah this is what I was gonna say and uh, regarding the reviews in general I mean their feedback is. <laughs> it was such a bad review. Yeah, no, I had someone come up to me at that Liar Man gig actually, mm -hmm. um, and they bought my, they bought the album, and they said they saw it, which I was like, oh damn, someone saw this. <laughs> like, oh, I saw this review, and they were like, I, I, you know, I don't feel that way at all. I think it's completely the opposite, and that's such a, that's, that's the validation. Mm -hmm. Just to hear one person, I mean, he had my album, asked me to sign it. I didn't know this person, you know, he's a fan, and like. He saw what someone said and he had his own thoughts about it. And that's what music is. It doesn't matter that someone put it in a magazine because that's what they get to do. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, but I, I mean, I'll admit, yeah, that when I first read it, it was it, it always stings. For someone, for you to put all this work into something and then someone mm -hmm. just rip it apart like this is trash. <laughs> yeah. You're like, what? Thanks, man. What you said, I've thought about so many times that there's so much work going into something. Yeah. And of course, somebody like the person who you just mentioned obviously does not get it yeah and he yeah. gets to write this because it's he their gets job to it, right but uh the thing is that with music it will always be that yeah like huge artists yeah that have made an impact and changed the world musically that's right somebody will always be there and say i just don't like that i you know i always use radiohead as a as an example like the the dislike button which i think should not exist on youtube um you, you know, you go to like a, a Radiohead, uh, Paranoid Android, and there's all these dislikes. And I'm like, who are these people? <laughs> I mean, how do you dislike that song? Yeah. It's just, it's such an incredible piece of art. And that's when you just realize, yeah, man, it's subjective. And yeah, okay, maybe someone thinks it's trash. Cool. Look at the likes. Listen to the people who walk up to you and want the signature and say that review is BS. You know, that's, that's the reality. That's what you should always mm -hmm. pay attention to. How much, as a musician, how much do you think, and how do you get to um, to choose the mm -hmm. feedback that is actually helpful? Well, that's a good question. It's hard. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult. Um, I don't know. It starts with you. You have to be. You have to really believe in what you do. Honestly, you know, because if you don't, um, that stuff's going to destroy you, because you're going to question everything you do. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think I've been doing it long enough that I know I can feel when something's good, you know? And uh, it starts with you. I guess that's the answer. You, you have to be really, really sound here. And this business is not for, for anyone who doesn't have thick skin mm -hmm. or can't take rejection. If you can't take rejection, you, this is not for you. Yeah. It's, it's just not. Maybe, maybe not even art. I mean, just art in general. Like, you have to be able to to accept that someone doesn't like it and move on, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to come back to the, uh, to the Athens thing. Mm. I mean, okay, Europe. Yeah. But why Athens, though? Uh, yeah, I, was, I came here the first time in 2004. Um, I have a dear friend, Eftathia. I love you. She was the... Uh, I met her in London, and she was like, you have to go to Greece, uh, you know, where I'm from. She wasn't going to be there that summer. I was with uh, my girlfriend in London, and she said, you, you guys go stay with my family. And we, we did, and I, and I loved it. Then broke up with the girl. Okay. She broke up with me. That was a tough one. That was a big, big breakup in my life, five years, and it shattered me, and I'm like, no one breaks up with me and it was like this big thing and I had to become a man okay. and the next year I uh, Estatea was going to be here and I said you know what I think I'm going to come back and check out Athens again and it was that trip that I got to really you know that someone was here to show me everything 
that I just fell in love. And mm -hmm. I started coming every year. Every year, I would go back to LA, save my money, come back here, um, visit a different island this time, get more of a feel, maybe stay longer. Um, and I just fell in love, man. I really did. It was, it was my home away from home, the place that I, I just wanted to be. And I would go to other countries, you know, okay, man, I went to Athens four years in a row. Let me, let me go outside of Greece. And I would go, I think this one year I went to, uh, where did I go? Maybe it was Italy. Yeah, it was Italy. And I was supposed to be there for like, I don't know, seven days. <laughs> and after four days in Rome, which I love, I love Rome. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go back to Athens. <laughs> I cut the trip short, went to Athens, had a great time. Yeah. And it's just, man, it's just, uh, it suits me. The vibe, the pace, everything about it, really. Mm -hmm. The food, the people, it's just, uh, it's home. Yeah, especially when you get to experience it from the music side and mm. you get to uh, hang and work with musicians yeah. here. Uh, it's even better, I think. Yeah, man, I love it. And uh, what has been a thing or some things after moving here that you found more like difficult than you were expecting? Yeah. And what have been some things that you say that, okay, this is the reason I'm here, like... I, I, I made the right choice. Yes, yeah, so another great question. Um, okay, difficult things, number one, and I think anyone who's not from here, who moves here, is bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. This is, but it's a nightmare for you guys too. It's a nightmare, nightmare for everyone. It's just, um, it's insane, man, like trying to get anything done, you know, uh, I had to hire a lawyer because I couldn't. Do, obviously, the language barriers makes it tougher. Makes it tougher for me. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's it's like the DMV in the U.S. For anyone in the U.S., it's like the entire government part of trying to uh, get your papers right or whatever is like the DMV. Mm -hmm. It's just so difficult, you know. Um, so that was a surprise. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it'd be that difficult. Yeah. Um, it's getting a bit better now. It I is. Think. It's more digital, right? Like, yeah, it's, it's been ages, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's trying to get a bit better, I think. But yeah, I get what they you're saying. They are trying, yes. You can tell that. There's certain things that are move a little bit easier. Obviously, with, with COVID, the, uh, the vaccine embolio. Yeah. Nice. Got to stop out of poli. That's Embolio, the embolio rollout was, was quite smooth mm -hmm. uh, and quite easy. Mm -hmm. And this was a, a good surprise. So things are getting a little bit, obviously, a little bit more progressive in that realm, but still issues. Yeah, of course. Um, and, you know, I'm a resident, mm -hmm. so I have residency, but you have to get, I mean, so many different things. And I'll tell you what the, I'd say the most archaic old practices is the Apple style Okay. Stamp. This is this is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the fact that you have to go through so much trouble for old records in your country, mm. like for instance, the U.S. does it. Some some countries don't even do Apple stuff, and you know it's just such a hassle. And this this is an outdated practice that I hope they do away with because it's it's not fun. But anyway, so that that's something that was that has proven to be difficult. But uh, you know, you get through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's worth it. On the other side. Okay, tofakito. Uh, uh, how do you say uh, politismo? Yeah. The culture, right? Uh, the people, um, the weather. Okay, it's like LA, so that's, it help. is like that's LA. helpful. It's exactly like LA. Yeah. Um, yeah, just way of life. Piotr mm Tezois. -hmm. And I'm really lucky to, you know, to be a touring musician and making, mus uh, making money outside of Greece and mm -hmm. being able to call this home and be based here. Mm -hmm. That's. Uh, that's the dream. Yeah, it is the dream. Yeah, and I really understand that um, that it's much more difficult to make money living here in Greece. Especially as a musician. Especially as a musician. Yeah. But sadly, that's everywhere, my friend. <laughs> yeah, it is. But everywhere. I get it. No, really, it's. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a small market, but you know, things now. It's not like where you live, you can do other things. Sure. Of course, you can a lot easier than you could before, but you know, still. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you want to be a, a session musician here, 
you have to do so many different things and Correct. you probably will not get away from teaching what you have to do and still there's so many teachers everybody yeah. is doing a great job but you know there's only so many students yeah so. yeah yeah it's difficult I, I absolutely and, and and the session work isn't as uh, it's not paying as much mm -hmm. as if you were in Germany or somewhere else yeah the gigs are specific that pay better. yeah right and there's few of mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. so yeah I get it the, the scene here um it's definitely difficult, and I can see that from afar, you know, even just being up close from afar. Uh, how in touch are you with the Greek music scene? The Greek music scene? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> not as in touch as I should be, I guess. <laughs> Do you have any guilty pleasures, though? <laughs> Greek uh, music uh, guilty pleasures? Greek music guilty pleasures. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, man. I mean, if I say no, that doesn't look good. Ah, you can say <laughs> I don't. I like. don't. Uh, I don't know it well enough. Mm -hmm. The Greek music scene. I, I gotta say. Does it have to do with the language? You think? I mean, listening to a Greek song in Greek. You know what song I really liked was this remake that Imam Baldi did, and I forget the name mm -hmm. of uh, this this woman and her husband. I think he was a bouzouki player. Okay. Bouzouki player and. Um, they did this remake of this song that I love, mm -hmm. but I don't know the name of it. Okay. Um, Imam Baldi, you know them? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, and there's this live uh, version of this song in Technopolis. Uh, I think MC Yinka's there. Mm -hmm. I gotta ask him about this. And the, the original singer, the lady, mm -hmm. you know, she's quite old now and she came out and it was so cool, like she came out and sang the, the, what they sampled, you know? Yeah. So I'd say that, that's one of my favorite things I've seen. Because uh, that song, I can listen to it over and over. The original and the, the sampled version of it. So Jerry had a good question I'd like to ask you. Mm -hmm. um, having lived both the LA scene and the Greek scene, huh. regarding the music that you play. Yeah. Because there is an audience for what you do here as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. In fact, it's better. Yeah. Yeah. It is? You think? Oh, yeah, man. The soul, like the appreciation for soul and funk, mm -hmm. it, even though it's an American art form, is way bigger here. I mean, you don't go out in a club and hear James Brown, Sam Cooke, uh, even the new guys like mm -hmm. Curtis Harding. and You don't generally hear that in the U.S. when you go out to a bar. Here, it's like, pff, how many bars are playing mm -hmm. soul and funk? It's, it's amazing. Do you think that they take this for granted there because it's their own thing and they have it like, like we have the Parthenon or whatever and we never sure. go visit or something? Maybe. Maybe that's it. Um, maybe it's just a really saturated market. Okay. Um... Also, of course, it helps that it's, uh, you know, the, the, like U.S. American music is such a big thing around the world mm -hmm. um, uh, culturally that, of course, it's going to have its pockets and find its way to some places that have a better appreciation because it's from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know why the, why the Greeks are so into soul, um, but I love it. It's, it's really... Because it's, I mean, more often than not, anyone you meet is like, oh, I love soul music. Mm -hmm. You know, and you really don't find that in the U.S. All right. Maybe it's because it's just too many different things. I don't know. When you moved here, mm -hmm. did you think that it was going to be so easy for you to find, or also has it been easy for you to find the musicians that uh, oh. are going to play with you, who we mentioned before? Uh, um, is it everybody that I saw in Liar Man? Yeah. Everyone? Yeah. So That's it's it. like Marios, Marios. Drums, it's Mike yep. on uh, them on uh, bass, Tassos keyboards, yep. and of course Chris Zadiotti. Yeah, and guitar. the horns. And the horns. And the horns. Awesome. Yeah, man, I can't do my music without horns. Awesome. It awesome. just it it's loses something. Yeah, you know? I mean it it, it elevates. It's such a big experience. part of soul and funk. Like you you just have to have it. You know, mm -hmm. and I'm a big James Brown Prince fan. You got to have horns, man. <laughs> you know, it's just you're losing. You're really missing. Such a key element, you know. You yeah. might as well, like, if I were not to have the horns, I would do more like what we did earlier. Like, mm -hmm. let's strip it down then. Yeah. You know. Um, but it was it was not as difficult as a. Uh, it kind of just sort of one by one came. But I'll tell you who helped me a lot was uh, Cosmodo, okay. uh, Dimitris Nasios, because mm -hmm. he and I were working on Aura, my last full length album, mm -hmm. and he he just knows everyone in the scene, and he'd be like, hey, you know who'd be good for this this guy. This guy, this guy. So he kind of helped me. He introduced me to a lot of these guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 
amazing choices. I can't yeah, say anything no, I, else. I, they're all amazing. You're participating in uh, Zantiotis' uh, Fighting the Average yeah. album, yeah. which I love. Yeah. Uh, Chris is one of my best friends. He's but amazing, Before man. he became one of my best friends, he was all also one of my favorite players and musicians yeah. before we became so close like years ago and uh, you play uh, is it the last song I the think the last song on the record yeah F Find A Way Find A Way yeah it's Find A Way <laughs> is that the name of the song it yeah, is find and you wrote the lyrics yeah the layout was there by Chris he also we had him on just before you right uh, our 92nd episode was with him you were oh, nice. episode 93 93 alright yeah. baby And, close, uh, close to 100, nice. Yeah, getting close. We have to figure out who we're going to invite for, for 100. It's going to be a milestone. Yeah, that's great. This is definitely a milestone, though. You're the first singer. First singer, yeah. paving the way, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you wrote the lyrics. Mm -hmm. You wrote the, the lines. You, you wrote everything. Yeah, the, the lyrics and the vocal melodies. And the vocal melodies, yeah. yeah because you're also a music producer, a uh, uh, vocal producer, like we yeah. said. And uh, how has it been? working with Chris on the song because like I said when we interviewed Chris uh -huh. it feels like this was made like together it doesn't feel uh, like uh, there was a layout and then you added your thing on it it feels so well matched yeah that yeah. they were as if they were born at the same time yeah no no he he sent me the layout and told me the theme of the record you know of the album and um, obviously we were all going through tough times at that time and yeah man I I I understood the vision, what he wanted, and um, yeah, I, I, it was a pretty quick write for me, that one. Um, honestly, I don't even know if I told him this. It, it was again a situation where it was from something old that I had written mm -hmm. that I had done nothing with, and the chorus, um, some of the melody of that is from something that was sitting around, like, oh, maybe this can work, mm -hmm. and, I'm, and I made it work. Yeah, so, yeah, it's, I'm really happy with it. I know he's really happy, so... One of my favorite lyrics in the whole album uh -huh. is, lately I've been listening to my dreams in slow motion, dude. Yeah. It's well, amazing. When I'm falling. <laughs> yeah, when I'm falling. That's great. Yeah. That's yeah. great. Awesome writing. Thanks, man. And you're going to be, I don't know if, uh, for anyone watching this before the 18th of April, you will be at Pier uh, Pireos Academy. Yeah. Uh, We're going to do this thing live, baby. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Dude. Yeah, yeah the looking band's forward. the killer. Yeah, I'm going to do a rehearsal with these guys all tomorrow, mm -hmm. so... Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. I might stop by if I'm if I'm done. Cool. By the, I've been there before. Yeah. And it's great. And uh, so the Gaucho Aprilio. Yeah. Pireos Academy and the Vlebe de Prin. In the I think the next fifth. Not this one, but the other one. From now on, we're going to the video here. It's going to be great. And uh, can't say can't wait. Yeah. To see this live, and I hope that is this also goes where it deserves to go. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Me too. He worked really hard on that, man. I know he was really just trying to get it perfect, you know. And that's 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 what I want to be around, you know, perfectionist, because that's who I am as an artist. Mm -hmm. um, I I already know that about you. I've seen that today. <laughs> Zadioti as well, you know. It's it's wanting it to be the absolute best it can be, and if that means waiting another two weeks or a month because you got to fix this or that, it's mm -hmm. it's so important because you you just have to be happy with that result yeah so I'd like to talk about some things uh, more technical now if you're like, yeah, if yeah you're of course. Right that because you're a really technical vocalist yeah but with the whole like really juiced up with soul and spirit <laughs> and um, I mean of course I'm not a singer mm. how much of this comes naturally and how much of this is work When regarding the voice and the singing and staying in tune and being aware of the groove, I mean, I've always thought, like musicians and singers, I mean, singers are also musicians, apparently, but you know. Uh, that's you know, a debate. It is. That's a debate. Okay, I consider the voice to be a, that's a an debate. instrument. This is what I consider it to be. It is. Um, but I do think there's a separation between singers and musicians. Mm -hmm. If you're just a singer, I don't mean it like just a singer, but, and you don't play an instrument. I mean, obviously, uh, there's so much less you can do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even though it's an instrument, there's so much less you can do. Yeah, 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 of course. So I think that it's, um, I don't know, calling a singer a musician, yeah, I guess it's it, sure. 
And I know as a singer, some singers are hating what I'm saying right now. But I don't know. I see them as just two separate things mm -hmm. in music, okay. personally. Yeah. But you know, the, the aspect of the groove is something that I've always believed that you either have it or you don't. You can work right. on it. Right. But if you don't get the groove, yeah. you're never going to get it as if you got it from the first Yeah, the first yeah, 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 yeah. And so uh, how much of what you're doing and the level that you're at now, which is like highest level you can be as a singer, in my opinion, and a frontman, having watched you perform, uh, how much of this is work and how much of this is talent, do you think? Uh, I'll tell you this, is... I put a lot more preparation into it than anyone would think. Anyone would think. Um, even the smallest motions, sometimes on stage, how I remember lyrics sometimes is because I'm going to make, I'm going to do a motion. Because I forget lyrics. I'm the king of forgetting my own lyrics. Okay. Yeah, it's weird because when I write something, um, it comes out of me and then it's it's out. And so I don't. I'm even though it came from me, I don't think of it all the time. So it's. If I do a song and I haven't sang it or paid attention to it in, you know, months, I will mess up those lyrics. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, I have to sort of, uh, it's physical. So I have to know that, like, when I, I'm going to remember this lyric if I do this one thing mm -hmm. when I'm on stage at that moment. Um, Very interesting. Never heard yeah, that. nobody would know that, mm -hmm. but it's for me. So there's a lot more preparation that goes into it. Um, than, than anyone, would, anyone would think. But it's like The Office, the original Office, uh, Ricky Gervais, if you've seen that, mm -hmm. which I'm a big fan of. You know, it's all made to look like it's very real and very improv. Yeah. But it's all very meticulously put together to, to look like that. Mm -hmm. And that's how I am as an artist. I'm really, really crazy meticulous about the, you know, the littlest thing, mm -hmm. uh, stage or, or recording. Mm. So... Talent is talent. Happy to have some talent, but if it's going to be great, you got to be small details. Yeah, yeah. At what point in your life did you actually know that this is what you're going to do? And when did you really heavily started working on the craft and getting ready to, you know, like become the artist you are now? Uh, always was doing music from a kid. Mm -hmm. Seven years old, started piano, and I was in uh, um, musicals and stage plays and all that but the decision like this is what I want to do with my life age 19 uh, just out of college I said this is it this is this is what I'm doing what do you study uh, film film oh uh, yeah film major before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 which is why I direct a lot of my videos mm -hmm. and you know it's I, I'm so happy to have that background to, yeah. to know something about this world because it, they really live together You know. Having said that, Defibrillator has a very interesting video, mm. and there's also a clip of you explaining some things about that, yeah, yeah. which I watched, and it's very interesting. Yeah. I, I suggest that uh, you guys go online and watch the, go on YouTube and watch the video, the music video for Defibrillator, and also the video where you explain some things about it, because yeah. it's very interesting. It's very abstract, but so unless I did the explanation, you wouldn't know, you know? Yeah, it, you know what? <laughs> it all... It has kind of a Tool vibe, in my opinion. You know the band Tool? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, yeah I didn't think about that. Yeah. Someone else said something about, um, oh, man, I'm not going to remember it. Uh, it was an 80s band that did something kind of animated video. Mm -hmm. Anyway, but people have compared it to uh, certain things that I never thought of. Mm -hmm. so that's really cool. It's interesting how, you know, uh, apart from the music, uh, from the musical side, from yeah. the music side, the, the video side can also be interpreted differently yeah. uh, depending on uh, tastes and yes. what people have experienced. Yeah, but it's very interesting. A cool video and uh, go watch, go check it out. It, it's worth it. And, uh, okay, so you obviously had a support from your, from your family to pursue this, right? Yeah, I mean, early on I didn't think so because, uh, you know, I want to do music is <laughs> always, didn't you just get a degree in something else? And they're like, what? So um, in the beginning, I didn't feel that way. I felt like they didn't support it, my mm -hmm. parents at least. Um, but, uh, you know, after some time, they saw how very serious I was about it. And, and they came around pretty quickly. Okay. So it wasn't something that lingered too long. But uh, I think as a parent, I might feel the same way too, man. 
It's a vicious game. It is. You know, it's a vicious uh, world to step into and say you want to be successful in, you know, so. Yeah, and you have lived in LA too, and uh, yeah. imagine being here. Yeah. What would you say to a person who told you that they want to do this for a living now? Never stop. Never stop, huh? Never stop, uh, even when you want, when you feel like everything's against you. And, you know, I had one time in my life that I, that I, that thought came into my mind, which scared the hell out of me. The fact that this thought came in my mind, like maybe I should quit music. Uh, I was LA at my darkest bottom, uh, a lot was going on. I was like, man, I started looking into being a flight attendant. Nobody knows that, it's crazy. I actually like, cause I just wanted to travel, I wanted to get away and I'm like, maybe I'll be a flight attendant. Um, and I was like, man, you know, how much does that pay? Maybe I'll quit music, I don't know, man. It's not going well. And I asked myself, you know, I listened to the voice in my head. I was like, is music, is this who you are? Or are you just trying to be this? And immediately that voice in my head was like, it's who you are. And I really listened to that voice and I, I said, okay, man, I, I gotta keep going. That would have been such a waste, dude. Yeah. <laughs> If you had decided to do that, seriously. <laughs> We wouldn't be having this conversation now. But you want the peanuts? Yeah, I mean, come on now. <laughs> What can I get you? Yeah, Coffee? I, tea? I mean, no, 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 <laughs> no disrespect. Yeah, of no course. disrespect. Actually, to my my ex wife was a flight attendant when I met her. It's a great job and a very important. Absolutely, job, I, I, I mean, come on. No, no disrespect, but you're no, um, you're no flight that's attendant. That's not what. Yeah, that was not my calling. Yeah. You know what I want to ask you? I mean, uh, if somebody sees you live and or listens to your records or your recordings or you know like see you performing in front of uh, 80,000 people or like in a small room mm. they know immediately that you're the real thing i mean oh, thanks, i have man. enough experience to know this myself and uh, watching you you have the aura like the title of the hey yeah. well played sir yeah yeah <laughs> uh, and then you put it up on the screen ding <laughs> you can pay me later <laughs> anyway the thing is that Watching you perform and listening to you sing on the records, you say that this guy is a real thing. He's got it all. You got the looks, you got the, you got the voice, you got everything. <laughs> But Thank the you. thing is that somebody might wonder, how are you not super famous? Like, why do you... You know who that somebody is? Me. I've been wondering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, my question is actually real because it does... It's, It doesn't take just that. And right. It doesn't mean that the, the, the people who are going to actually like make it and be like super famous, if that's what... Making it means something different for everybody. Correct. It's not like making it for somebody might be like writing songs yeah, in, his, yeah. in his apartment with nobody knowing about it. Okay? Yeah. But the thing is that to be able to have a very good living doing yeah. what you do. To be super successful. Yeah, right. and not having to compromise with anything As else. your own artist. Exactly. Yeah. It's not enough being very good at what having you're Having those, yeah, exactly. What do you think goes into this? Other, is it luck? Is it uh, like connections? What is it? Well, you know, I don't know. The whole luck thing, sure, you got to have some luck. But... Uh, I never buy into the luck thing because you create your own luck, you know what I mean? You got to put yourself in a good place for good things and good opportunities. Um, which is why people move to LA, right? They go there because they say, okay, yeah, I, I always used to say to people, the greatest thing in the world can happen for you tomorrow living in LA mm -hmm. as an artist. Yeah. That's true. You can get a phone call, someone saw you this. The opportunities are in a place like LA. So, um, you know, You create your own luck. So that's the luck thing. But uh, having, you know, the external things that people think of as famous or having what it takes, it's, you, you, have to, you have to be cool to be around. Honestly, that's a huge thing no one thinks about. Like, this is all collaborative art. People have to want to be around you. Mm -hmm. uh, unless you're, you know, insanely, you know, prince. Unless you're just a prodigy where, like, you can do anything you want. And, and you know, that's a different story. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. Um, and then beyond that, it's what you just said. It's, it's connections. It's, it is politics, politics, politics. You just sort of have to manipulate and maneuver uh, your way to, to this 
to that place of uh, someone who can do something for you mm -hmm. doing it, you know? And I'm going through some of that now. I don't want to get into that, but I'm going through some of that right now um, in a good way mm -hmm. where um, I've had to really fight to, to uh, yeah, I can't really say much because it's I can't say much about this thing, which is cool. <laughs> Um, but I've had to really fight to get to a place that I felt like should have been easier to get to. Okay. With all that I've done. Mm -hmm. um, all I've accomplished, even though I'm not where I want to be as and do's, you know. Mm -hmm. With Parav Salar, man, I get, to, I get to have both worlds. Mm -hmm. I get to do my thing as and do's, and I get to be and do's in this amazing project. Um, but I don't want to forget about yeah. where I started, mm -hmm. you know, and what I'm trying to accomplish as and do's. So anyway, it's a lot of it's a lot of politics, and and you know what? If you're not again, if you're not, if you can't play the game, you shouldn't be here. You know. So I'm, I've gone through some tough stuff with it, but making some progress now. I sometimes think uh, how many amazing talents never saw the light of day because they many, didn't many, have many, that. and I know a lot of them to be yeah, honest. Yeah, me too. Me yeah, too. I'm sure we all do. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's some people that I just said, please get a manager. Sure. Please do it because. It's, it's such a waste, such a waste. And yeah. there's so, so many, even people that will have changed the whole game, I think, never yeah. got to get the voice that, you know. Man, I know so many yeah, people yeah. who I respect so, so much as, as their own artist, and they, are, um, they haven't even scratched the surface, you know, yeah. for different reasons. Uh, but damn, do you have to have, you know, real ambition. You know, you really have to have so much ambition and uh, no disrespect to any of those people, but I think sometimes they have a lapse in ambition and that can set you back so far. Like you just have to keep, keep, like I said, that's my advice to anyone. You just got to keep going, you know, and listen to the voice in your head. Keep going if it's, uh, if it's what you want to do. Yeah, you got to fight through the hardships and there are many hardships because, you know, you got to eat. But the thing is that... Um This, the, the politics game also leads to a lot of fakery, and I'm sure you know that. Of course. The fake it till you made it, make it thing in LA course, is course. My, fa my, my, my least, my worst, uh, oh. what I hate about it, you know. Well, you kind of have to do it there. Yeah, you, you just kind of have to. You have to make yourself seem a little bit bigger than you are. Mm. <laughs> like you have to go be a rock star at night and go back to your tiny little apartment yeah. and drink whiskey till you wake up on the floor. I'm not talking about anybody specific. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I think that there is a... I mean, the fake it aspect mm -hmm. is something not that simple. And uh, I mean, faking it for some people is not faking it exactly. Okay, yeah, maybe we're different. Yeah, we're talking about different... Yeah, like, if you're fake, you're going to be fake even if you have the opportunity to go sure. further and you're not going to sure, go Sure, 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 that's true. Because yeah. at some point, you're going to be exposed. That's right. But, like, you can fake being, like, a rock star or, uh -huh. like, being richer than you are, but you can't fake being a good Dude, singer. Dude, yeah. I never, you know, the, the rich thing, um, I've written a lot about this, so I'm, I, I write... Like my memoirs, mm -hmm. just because I don't want to forget different things that have happened in my life and stories. And so since I was 35, I won't tell you what my age is now, <laughs> but I started writing down like everything, you know. Um, and I and that's something I talk about a lot is uh, fame and money. They don't necessarily have to go hand in hand, you know. Like I lived in LA, kind of as this underground rock star. But I had no money, and I never faked that part. Mm -hmm. I always was very open, like, yo, I'm broke. And it kind of was a, even more, uh, it was more appealing to a lot of people. Like, like this guy is it's just giving us what he's got. Mm -hmm. And I think that, uh, that you know, a lot of people related to that. Yeah. Um, even people who were doing well in L.A. and making money, you know, mm -hmm. they saw somebody who was just really raw with what they had and... And that was it. And they, you know, I was really open about that, about not having the money. And, yeah. and, and I think it's different now where Instagram and all that stuff, people do try and portray maybe like the, yeah. the, the money aspect of it all, but who cares, man? Yeah, I don't I mean, know. It's never, I've never cared about that. Yeah. To me, it's revolting to see people yeah. trying. I mean, like, yeah. You like can rent private jet 
uh, you know, like just a half of the private jet and sit in. You yeah, know about yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm sure you can. Influencers. I'm, yeah, you, you can rent this like little, you know, it's a, it's in a like studio. A, like a set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, I've seen all this stuff about that. And I mean, it, if you find yourself doing that, you got to reevaluate. Yeah, exactly. Because that's crazy. That's sad. It's absolutely crazy. And I have no problem saying that. I think it's, I think it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but the the fake it part, you can fake s- certain things, but other things, the, the things that actually matter, you can't fake. Sure. So, and with art, not only art, with science as well, but with art yeah. also. I mean, in my opinion, you wanna you wanna make it like first get your facts straight, like yeah, work on yourself, <laughs> yeah. and then distort them at your leisure, as they say. Sure, you know? sure, sure. But yeah. the thing is, like, yeah, I mean. It's a chaotic world out there. It is. Yeah. Um, do you prefer performing in front of like thousands of people or like an intimate small audience? Thousands. Thousands? Oh, yeah. Yeah? It's easier. It is easier. <laughs> it's much easier, Yeah, you said that before and I... I'd much rather, you know, 80,000 people than eight people in a living room. Why is that though? Terrifying. That's terrifying to me. Uh, is it like because you can also see them like and feel their presence and well yeah eight people just sitting down like come on do your thing it's like ugh, you know 80,000 is just a wall okay <laughs> you know it's just and it's uh, it's exciting not you know I very rarely get nervous mm-hmm. I mean it's I'm just excited um, I would be nervous to sing in some of those like um, maybe not tiny I think Tiny Desk is actually like bigger than you think it is yeah yeah but you know in a like just a a a living room with people sitting on the floor you know and you sing acoustic i really respect artists who do that because that terrifies me actually um i would do it but it's much scary you know more scary than Mm -hmm. eighty thousand on a big stage yeah built for the big uh, for the big bucks yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) that's right yeah okay and that overwhelming feeling i mean i've in my time, having performed before in front of a large <coughs> audience, mm-hmm. not being the front man, mm-hmm. the over, how overwhelming this is and how exciting, you know, does this change having done it so many times? Uh, the only thing that changes, I guess, is you really, um, every crowd's different. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what changes in, in the coolest way is that, you know, the fact that I get to go out and perform in front of thousands of people it's all about the crowd energy now. Now it's like, you know, oh, that crowd wasn't as crazy as I thought they'd be, or that crowd was absolutely out of their minds and you didn't expect it. So it all just sort of, you get to see it as an individual basis with these big crowds and and I I love it, obviously, still. It's it's what I, let's say I was born to do it because it's what I've always wanted to do, Mm -hmm. yeah. Another question from Jerry. Come on, Jerry. How, how much of, of an influence your uh, film studies mm. has uh, to your composite uh, Compo- composing, composing music? music. Yeah. That's a really, really good question, man. Good yeah, Jerry. Ah. Um, Excuse my English. Poliorea. <laughs> <laughs> your English is better than his Greek yeah, so for sure you don't get to apologize <laughs> for sure um, yeah it it here and there it really trickles in like here and there uh, I'll come up with a music piece and before I even write lyrics I'm like oh this I see the visual aspect of it um, and I guess just being in film and living in LA again being around that industry and just how important visual, the visual element is. Uh, it's always there for me. So it, de- it does influence, not every time, but it definitely influences um, the more like cinematic kind of, you know, layouts that I might come up with. Mm-hmm. And then when I start writing something and you start seeing something and it's really cool to, to know that, oh man, I can't wait to shoot this video. Because you, you know the storyline and you, you know, so yeah, it definitely plays a big part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good question, Jerry. Thank you, man. Awesome. We should switch. Poli orea erotisi. Ah, nice. Perfect. Nah, you gotta stop. Uh, yeah. Make I sure mean, you include that. Oh, we will. Of course we will. <laughs> we don't sure. cut anything out, dude. <clears throat> but the thing is that 
listening to defibrillator specifically mm -hmm. painted pictures in front of me mm. and this is something that I love when it happens and we were having the conversation about Costa Sabanis yes. outside yes. he's uh, he's EP yes uh, really Autumn. cool it paints pictures and when this happens I yeah. know that this is good music yeah yeah I mean if you can see it in front of you and everybody sees something different by listening to the same thing and it means that it goes through you and your emotions and your experiences and yeah yeah it, it like touches something picture. beyond the surface yeah yeah, yeah. any uh, future plans like close near future pl plans you want to share with us before we wrap this up I really want to but I can't yet alright Yeah, I wish I could. Uh, something really great mm -hmm. coming up, and I'll tell you about it afterwards. Okay. But I can't say it on we'll camera We'll be expecting yet. things, though. Yes, yes. Okay, so... Uh, expect to see me and the band more often. Okay, awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's great. That's, and more, uh, I'm sure you've got more uh, Barov uh, Yeah, we've got uh, some shows in April. Uh, what is it? Barcelona, Madrid, Lisbon. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, the summer festival season. So, and we'll be uh, Parov Solar will be at uh, release festival. Awesome again, yeah, June yeah. 15. Nice. Yeah. Gonna gonna try to stop by. Yeah, man, you got to. <laughs> um, listen, man, thank you very much for taking the time. Man, to do thank this. you so much for having me. Really, really a pleasure. Enjoyed it very much. It's been a, it's been great. Um, we we can't wait to, to see more undo stuff. Like yes. you said, the Parov stuff's great. And also, we can't wait for Chris Zadiotis uh, yeah, yeah. release. Uh, I'm looking forward to that too. Live next week, 18th of April. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you so much. Appreciate Cheers, you. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.